Hello, we hope you all had a great weekend. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. As always, if you guys are new here, or if you guys are new here, well, you don't know about this. Every story will be timestamped down below as well as all the articles used. So I hope you guys all enjoy. Let's hop into our first story, though, and kind of some controversy out there. I'd love to hear all your opinions about this down below in the comments section because we have two-sided arguments all over the CSK scene as of late. This one revolving all around Mo TV. If you guys were aware, within the last seven days, we've actually had two major CSK figures, if you want to refer to them as that, Anomaly and Mo TV, both banned on Twitter for some time, at least, are going to be a 30-day ban for both of them, assumed as of right now will be 30 days, and not permanent or indefinite for either one of them, both for hateful conduct. Now, with Anomaly's ban, we really didn't know what exactly the clip was that actually got him to be banned, but it seems that he's going to be taking a short vacation from Twitch as the time does pass. Now, on top of that, though, it does seem MoTV did release the own clip that actually got him banned on Twitch for what will be, apparently, 30-day ban. Now, again, I do want to say there's two sides to the argument, but I'll let you guys hear the clip first off as to what exactly got him banned on Twitch. You're not allowed to say faggot, apparently. My timing's so hard. I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna try to stop saying faggot, but it's one of my favorite words of all time. It's not a bad word. It has a lot of meanings. What the heck? Your graffiti doesn't work right here. What the? Yo, is is faggot considered a bad word? Whoa! Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> Nowadays. Really? Yeah. It's like I use the word retard to call people like I don't call same. People, I use the word faggot to call people retards. Yeah, it's like. So when I refer to this as the F word, I don't mean F-U-C-K, I mean F-A-G. Now, obviously, I've talked about this in the past, guys, and a lot of you out there watching these videos do not get offended by the same things that I get offended by. And if, in fact, you guys could call me a pansy, whatever you want, because according to what I can actually say on these episodes, I never really cuss, I don't really say words of, of, about this sort, but I don't mind when people say it, you know, between themselves, between friends, a lot of things out there, a lot of phrases and words, in my opinion, are okay to be said when in a closed group of friends. Now, when it's said publicly to thousands of people, that's an entirely different story. Now, for one, this word in particular, especially nowadays, I consider it to be offensive. Now, you guys, a lot of you watching this maybe think the opposite, but in terms of the way he used it, we really don't have too much context as to how the F word, F-A-G, was actually being used. But as you heard his argument as well, um, he uses the F word to refer to people as the R word. It, it doesn't seem appropriate no matter what the context. And again, some of you guys might think against that, but that's my point of view. Now, on top of that, this is also the same guy, MoTV, who said, as a joke, apparently, the FAG word was one that got him through a lot of tough times. Now, he also makes on, goes on to say as well, throughout his childhood years, it became his favorite word. So, you know, I understand to a certain extent as to why this would be an issue. You know, of course, some people are offended by this and no one knows the exact context as to why he was using this word and how he's using it towards people. But he also makes a great point in saying that his channel on Twitch actually is age restricted. Now, if it is age restricted, you, you actually have to go there and confirm you're an old enough audience or mature audience to actually watch his content. I do side with him on the point that what is the point of that if you're not to some extent allowed to say whatever you want and I do I think for the majority of times he does say this he probably does not mean it in a, in a totally brutal way and so for once and in a long time guys I'm gonna side with Mo TV on this it does seem as of late twitch is really cracking down on hateful conduct uh, no matter who the creator is so what do you guys think about this is it offensive are you guys offended by it I know a lot of you guys probably aren't so we're gonna move on to some actual CSGO news now and the first of which is all about Zai Wu if you guys are new to the CSGO scene go look this guy up tons of highlight clips and we've been talking about him for the past six months because allegedly Zai Wu, one of the up-and-coming French players out there, trying to finish his education before he signs any teams. Now, it was initially offered, I believe it was fifteen dollars or $20,000 a month he was offered by Team Envious. This was actually six months ago, and it was reported eventually he was going to finish his BAC, a French degree over there, before he pursued any offers. Now, it's a great thing in the CSGO scene. We've seen several pro players out there finish their education first. That way, they have a solidified backup option, or they can continue their education a lot easier when they do end their professional career but as of right now that was actually back in January early uh, late January as well where Anel did clarify he had six months left of his degree which means any week now any day now it does seem that Zai Wu will finish his education and be pursuing full-time offers for a CSGO professional team now will it be on a team that's going to be going to the major it seems unlikely right now but who's going to sign him that is the huge question this guy is uh, of course under major development still a very young player probably one of the top prospects out there if not the number one prospect in CSGO right Right now, and he showed this past weekend at the French Championships exactly why he is one of the top rated players in the world right now. To show you guys some stats on screen as well, there was actually two back to back best of threes one versus Maxi Sauce and one versus Team LDLC. LDLC, right now, an entirely different question mark in the French scene. That, that team has always kind of somewhat struggled, but this weekend in the French Championships was a whole other thing we saw.
saw it. Alex being one of those players who maybe should be off that roster or maybe take a break from CSGO. But more importantly, Zai Wu, actually for the first time in a long time, we're seeing players like Zai Wu. I don't remember the last time we saw a player do this in back-to-back -back best of threes, dropping 70 frag games. Now in that uh, series against LDLC, it was only two maps. The guy went 70 fragged, both of those best of three series. And that is why he is one of the best players in the world right now. I cannot wait to see where this guy goes. And also, a big question out there. A lot of you guys out there know some things that I don't even know about. Please comment down below. What team do you think is going to sign Zai Wu? And what are his offers going to be like? I cannot even imagine. You can probably assume right now the 25k per month range, which is insane to think about. But this guy seems to be worth it right now. And also to be talked about in Conspiracy is nothing rumors out there. There are some big things coming. I hope maybe we can try and guess what's going to come. As of right now, we have no idea. Cloud9 did announce that Sticko for Mouse Sports will be their stand-in player for ESL Clone. That 200,000 apparent buyout of FNS continuing to go to waste as he sits over there and no one knows what FNS's future will be, although we're pretty sure it's not going to be with Cloud9. They're not going to retake a risk on him. It will be Sticko to fill in that roster for their fifth member for ESL Cologne, although Cloud9's uh, former nothing did confirm on stream he actually was offered the spot to stand in for ESL Cologne. He denied that stand-in opportunity for specific reasons. We're not really sure what these reasons could be, and we also did see Mixwell tweet out that he will not be going to a North American team in the future, which I thought was very curious thing to say that he kind of confirmed he wants to stay in a European lineup which is obviously a kind of a, a good smart decision for him in his future uh, in terms of wanting to be on a top tier team as of right now but also he did offer himself up to be a stand-in for Cloud9 they still went with Sticko though so very interesting if Cloud9 does have a good tournament with Sticko you can probably assume he will be signed but they did also offer nothing Mouse Sports also offered nothing apparently he, they considered him at least I'm not really sure if there was an offer out there for a full-time position which apparently he did for pass or maybe they foregone uh, Four went that offer to, of course, offer snacks instead. But there could be three options that I think of right now. You guys can think of some on your own. There are three options as to what maybe nothing is going to be doing in the future and as to why he would deny the stand in for Cloud9 at ESL Clone for reasons. Now, uh, four options. He could be an analyst at future events, maybe at ESL Clone, although I don't think he was on the talent lineup. I could be wrong about that. He could be a two sticking out with Old Guy Crew, Old Guy Crew doing very well in ESCA alongside players like Shroud. It could be a very fun thing for them. They're making their own merch and maybe doing a great job there. Three, he could be getting married. You never know. He's been with his girlfriend for quite some time, and obviously getting married or engaged takes a lot of time commitment, so that could be another option. Or four, the final option, which I think might be the most possible, nothing is coming back to full-time pro CSGO, and it's going to be for a random team out there who we obviously cannot say, which would be the obviously the, the option I would prefer the most, but it could be any of those four. If it's none of those four, I do apologize for wasting your time on, on those options. And in bigger news, I am so excited. I, I honestly have not enjoyed enjoyed watching CSGO. I haven't really been playing CSGO too often. A lot of you guys are aware I took my full-time job here and I'm really trying to time commit a lot of stuff to this channel as well as working at work and kind of developing ideas for the future, which you guys will know about very soon. But also on top of that, I've not been enjoying watching CSGO for a long time. So that's why I'm so pumped for all these minor and major qualifiers coming these next few months and especially cheering for teams like NIP and mainly 3D Max. We have the European minor qualifiers finally finish up and we do have your eight solidified minor European teams on screen for all of you with some minor upsets actually at the minor qualifications. Now, first off, it was NIP with a kind of an upset loss to 3D Max on day one. They then won three out, guys. NIP has qualified. They were actually joined by Optic Gaming and Kingwin. Uh, OG and Kingwin were actually the teams who went 3-0 at that tournament, so great to see both those teams doing quite well. And we could very well see Optic Gaming back at the major for the first time in about a year. So on top of that, though, 3D Max comes back from down 1-2. and two. They won their last two matches versus Hapaleno. It's not Jalapeno, it's Hapaleno as well as Windigo, Windigo throwing a huge turnaround and 3D Max making a big come, comeback there. And so as I told you guys before, and I'm going to keep on mentioning it guys, if NIP or 3D Max now actually make the major qualifier, which is going to be eight teams of the minor guys and two of those teams will go through the major qualifier. If two, one of those two teams is NIP or 3D Max, I will do a double knife giveaway and 3D Max kind of upset everyone there. And they didn't really beat anything besides NIP, no, no real top tier talent. And again, of the eight teams to go through, they're probably going to be your most expected teams, but I still will do that giveaway. Way. Now, very lastly as well, they'll be joined by other teams out there. So we have Optic, Kingwin. We have alongside them 3D Max, NIP. Alongside them, Ents. We also have Red Reserve. And then finally rounded off, we have XNV as well as I think it was Team Sprout. Now, XNV looked very dominant as well and kind of no surprise there. But going to be some really cool teams there at the European Minor. And I cannot wait to see which two teams actually make it through. Going to be very competitive. And there were also two upsets to talk about very shortly. One of which was actually Heroic. Ho Heroic, a very, very big upset there. Going 0-3, of course. They actually had Rubino on the bench again for his eye infection, which seems to be very
very serious. In fact, it was actually former Imperial member Asilian at filling in for him, and they struggled big time, guys. They got dominated. Heroic was actually one of, I guess you could say, in my personal opinion, over the past month, they were going to be a favorite going into these European minor qualifiers. They go 0 and 3. Now, alongside them, in a very big upset in Polish scene was Team AGO. AGO, unfortunately, going 2 and 3, losing their last match there to actually try and qualify. So, again, very sad to see them not going through, but still, we have a lot of teams out there who deserve to go through, and they did, and we have some very cool chances at some very cool stickers. NIP 3D Max, make it happen. And that's gonna do it for today's episode of CSK News. I just wanna thank all of you guys for the great comments these past few weeks. I know I thank you guys way too much and a lot of you guys get sick of that, but seriously, thank you all as well for the great response in my last video where I talked way too fast. I, I try my best not to talk fast, but you guys all, if you know me, I, I just can't help it. But also that was all about energy drinks and a huge shout to all of you guys who are reaching out to me via Twitter or Steam about sending me energy drinks from you know Europe or other countries out there because episode two of that series, which will be a long time in the future, is actually going to be trying to get um, drinks you cannot energy drinks you cannot actually get in America so thanks for all of you guys who reach out I'm definitely willing to pay for shipping and all that stuff I just don't know who I want to trust with my address to send me packages but thanks to all of you guys who did reach out and enjoy that video some great videos coming soon one of them will be an apartment tour the other one's going to involve actual CSGO skins and of course you guys have uh, the near daily CSGO news episodes over here so thank you all for watching as always my name is Jake like you and I will see you all very soon goodbye guys